So we're looking at 4.3, which is elementary differentiation rules today, and that is on pages uh, 178 to 187 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is to demonstrate understanding of differentiation based on slope as a rate of change. And our lesson objectives today, number one, to learn the power rule for differentiation. Uh, number two, to apply the power rule and other rules to a variety of questions. And number three, to learn the different notations for taking the derivative. So first we're gonna look at the notation for the derivative. So, so far we've talked about a couple of different ways to say that we're finding the slope of the line tangent to a function at a specific point. That's the derivative. Um, the first way that we talked about it is just saying f prime x. If our original function was f of x, then taking the derivative is, is f prime of x. Um, another way is by using that definition of the derivative by using limits. So f prime of x equals limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all divided by h. That's a very long way of saying taking the derivative. Um, we could call it y prime if our original function was just y. And we can call it change in y over change of x, which leads us to dy over dx. And this is a very common one that we're going to be seeing a lot of in the future. And this is just really the same thing as saying the change in y with respect to the change in x. So let's recognize the pattern then. Uh, maybe you noticed over the past couple of days that the pattern has emerged, that a pattern sorry, has emerged when we were taking the derivative of functions, which is actually what we call the power law. So the first example that we did yesterday, um, we started off with a function of f of x equals x squared, and we ended up when we took the derivative of 2x. Now we used the limit definition of the derivative, which took a very long time, but uh, maybe you've recognized the pattern. Our second one was uh, f of x equals 4x cubed plus 2x, and our derivative was 12x squared plus 2. So the pattern, if you haven't noticed, is that if you take this exponent and you put it down in front and subtract 1 from it, then we get um, our, our derivative. Um, over here, if we take the 3, move it in front, that becomes 12, 3 times 4, and we subtract 1 from the exponent, that becomes squared, so 12x squared. Here is like saying we have a um, exponent of 1, so if we bring the exponent down, we just say 2 times 1, we subtract 1 from the exponent, that becomes x to the 0, and anything raised to the power of 0 is 1, so we get an answer of 2. So that's what th we call the power law. So if we had um, a function called x to the n, then so if f of x equals x to the n, then f prime x is going to be n times x to the n minus 1. So we, we bring the exponent down in front and then we subtract one from the exponent. So we have other laws that we are going to be following as well and they're all based on our power law. And the first one is the derivative of a constant is always going to be zero. So we can look at this a couple ways. Um, if we said f of x equals say 3, well we know that that's the same thing as saying y equals 3. And on a graph that's just a horizontal line. So since the derivative is the tangent line to a curve, if we have a horizontal line, if we draw a tangent line, it's also horizontal, and the slope of that tangent line and that horizontal line is zero. So the derivative of a constant is always zero. The other way of looking at it is like saying this is x uh, three times x to the power of zero. So if we use our power law and we take this exponent and we move it in front, then that's now zero times three, which is zero. Um, our second other little minor law is that when taking the derivative of a function with multiple terms, you just take the derivative of each term separately. So if we had something like 3x cubed, if that's our function, f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared, um, the derivative would just be uh, 9x squared minus 4x. And so we don't worry about the fact that there's a subtracting sign in here. Um, we keep that subtracting sign, but we just take each term and take the derivative of it separately. Um, when taking the derivative of the multiple of a power, just take the derivative of the power and multiply it by the coefficient. So if we were said, well, we already worked with 4x cubed, um, and with this 3x cubed at the, the question before, if we said y equals 4x cubed, when we take y prime or the derivative, we take that 4 and we multiply it by that 3 that we bring down in front. And so that just becomes 12x squared. And finally, be careful when your exponents are fractions and or negative numbers, um, because when you're subtracting one and bringing it down in front, things tend to, um, it's easy to make little mistakes. So here's a bunch of examples. Um, we're gonna take the derivative of the following functions. So our first function is 10 x to the fourth. Well, f prime then, x, is gonna be just, we take this exponent, bring it down in front, multiply it by the 10, that's 40, and then we subtract one from it. So that's just 40 x cubed. Um, our next one, we have a negative exponent. 
And when we bring that exponent down in front, it's being multiplied by the negative three that's already there. So that gives us positive 21. But when we subtract one from negative seven, just make sure that you actually subtract one. You don't add one by mistake. And that gives us negative eight. Our third example is when we have negative two over x to the eighth power. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is always write that as, um, as, when it's not a fraction. So we're gonna leave that as negative two x to the power of negative eight. So we're gonna take the reciprocal of that thing and give it a negative exponent. So when we take the derivative of it, um, it becomes 16 x to the power of negative nine. When we have f of x equals four times root x, you need to remember that root x is like saying x to the power of a half. So again, we wanna write it as an exponent. We don't want fractions, we don't want roots. And then we take that exponent, bring it down in front, so that's four times a half. And then we take subtract one from a half, which now becomes negative a half. So that is just two x to the power of negative a half. And I should write that correctly, that is f prime of x. When we have multiple terms, we, um, we just take each term separately. So y prime is gonna be eight times nine, which is 72, x to the power of seven. Eight times seven, which is 56, x to the power of six. Four to the power of five, don't be fooled. There's no x there, so that is just a constant. So when we take the derivative of that, it's just a zero. And finally, if you have something that looks like this, you need to make it look like this thing here. So you need to get individual terms out of that thing. So we're gonna expand the top. 3x plus five and 3x minus five is just like a, the factored version of a difference of squares. So that's nine x squared minus 25, all divided by x to the fifth power. We don't have a rule yet for dividing. Um, we'll get to one in a couple days here. So for now, we're just going to rewrite that thing as nine x squared over x to the fifth minus 25 x to the fifth, which means I get nine x uh, to the power of negative 3 minus 25x to the power of negative 5. And when I take the derivative of that, I get negative 27x to the power of negative 4 plus 125x to the power of negative 6. So in summary, the power rule is the first and one of the most important of the differentiation rules that you're going to learn in this unit. It's a much quicker and easier way than using the definition of the derivative where we have to use limits that we've been using so far. And just remember to be careful when your exponent happens to be a fraction and or a negative. So your assignment is on pages 186 to 187. Uh, good luck and we'll see you in class.